Christ, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And uh, Lord Willard, I hope you're edified. Uh, this lesson is uh, just inspired from Elder Apostles Rum Live show that he did a little earlier, which was entitled All Hands on Deck. All right, All Hands on Deck. And I was taking heed to the video and the message of what the apostle was saying. And a lot of other brothers, you know, need to take heed to it. Because what are you waiting on? You know? You know, I, I see it like this, you know. It's really nothing else to be living for. You see in what times we're living in, you see in the news, you see in the brothers posting and doing the works. You know, like what are you waiting on? You know, I think it's this lack of days of spirit with certain men. And it's just my humble observation, nobody in particular. I just I was just meditating on it, what Apostle was saying, and men not doing their job. It's because, you know, they're not really fearing. You know, if you fear, you're gonna get up. You're gonna move. Now, for an example, you know, um, the other day, right? I shared this, you know, I shared this with brothers. The other day, you know, I was in the park and I was uh, doing a walk. And um, on this trail, you know, it's, it's like, it started to get dark. The sun the sun was going down. And and uh, as I was walking through the trail, I noticed, you know, I walk a few times, like, what, I don't know how many miles is what, about five something miles, maybe, how many times I walked through it. But anyway, you know, when you walk this path that I was walking on, uh, you know, it get it gets through the it get woody. You know, when you you know you walking through the woods and trees on both and left sides, but it started getting dark. Now there's no lights. There's no lights that would light up that area. So there was a fear spirit that came upon me. You know, I said, oh shit. You know, I should have stopped walking the first time instead of doing another lap. And now I'm stuck in this woody area. Where it's nothing but bushes, you know, nothing but woods on my left and right. And I got, I got, I got, I got spooked, you know, I got spooked, you know. I said, man, let me get the fuck up out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, because <laughs> I, you know, it's dark as hell. No telling what could jump out. I kept thinking of, I don't know, I kept thinking of, uh, I don't know how the Lord had a spirit on me. I'm thinking of a panther or something jumping out the damn bushes. But anyway, I wasn't so super afraid, but. I, I didn't turn around and go back the other way. I kept walking through it. But what happened was the fear that was on me to get the fuck up out of there was I said, you know what? Instead of walking, I'm about to jog. I'm about to I'm about to do a, a little nice jog and get the hell up out of here to, to, to rush and get up out of here. So I started jogging. And as I was jogging, you know, it the, the spook was on me to where I was never tired. You know, I never got tired. I jog, I ran all the way until I got back to my vehicle, you know, and I didn't stop. But I said to myself, I said, well, damn, you know, if I could run, most of the times when you run for a long period of time, you get tired. We all get tired. We're in the flesh. You know, you could run a lot. You may not get, uh, you know, as less wind than someone you might got more strong wind or whatever, you know, because you do a lot of running and walking. But the point I'm trying to make is that when I was running, it was I was spooked. Not to the point where I was af afraid, you know, frightened out of my mind, like I couldn't handle it. But it was a fear that came upon me, and I felt it. And I said, let me get the hell up out of here. So I started to run. I ran, and I, I ran all the way, all the way for a long time. I ran for a good distance, man. I can't tell you the, the distance, because I don't know, but it was a good long distance, and I got to my car. And when I got to my car, I said, well, damn, I'm not even tired. I could have ran again. I could have kept running. But I, but what got me through it was that my mind wasn't focused on what I was doing. I was not focused on what I was doing as running. Even though I already walked around and I kind of, you know, up the hills and things like that. I was already, I should have been tired. But the fear that was on me made me move. 
So I only say this, I say that to say this, you know, and even in its truth. If you fear the Lord, you're going to do what the Lord said to do because you fear. And you're not going to think about it, you know. Mm. You're not going to think about it. You're seeing the prophecies, you know, unfold and unravel in your eyes. So that should bring fear upon you, you know. That, you know, nothing should... Nothing else should be too distracting to take away, you know, what's what's evident, you know, right in your eyes. But that little moment there, I learned something with myself and how fear can uh, override being tired, you know. And say you're getting chased by a dog, you're getting your damn knee got hurt, man. Your knee got hurt. And you know you got sharp pain in your knee. But let a damn dog start chasing you or something. Or something... You know that frightens you when you start hauling ass you're not thinking about being hurt you're going to haul ass so you know i say that to say that in this truth you know if you you know it's a, when you doing the works of the lord you don't think about it because you know it, it gets done you know and then then you know everything's become routine the more you do it and you don't even think you're just doing it and it's a good pattern to pick up and doing the works of the Lord and edifying uh, the Lord's uh, hopeful elect. It's a good thing. That's a good pattern. Because now that you've been doing it, you don't even, it don't, you don't, it's not, it's no burden, no nothing. You just do it. You know, and when you stop doing it, you feel like, now nah, I got to do it. It's sort of like, I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but I hope that it's edifying. Uh, may edit some of it, maybe. But anyway, you know how when you go on your diet, you get a routine, say you're cleansing the body. And you like how you feel, you know, you accomplish your goal. You don't want to go back to eating no bullshit, but you know you is eventually. But but what you do, you try to, you know, you want to get back on that horse. You want to get back on that ride. Say you, you know, when you out, you work out, you know, you know that you work out, can't work out all the time. But when you work out, you want to get it in. It's like without it, you feel bad. You feel like you're going off. So if you're not, you should feel bad if you a prophet. And you're not teaching the word the way that you should be, especially at this very moment, because this is all we have left, you know, and everything is really going to be taken away. And for our works and to prove to the Lord that we that we fear and we we uh, we are uh, uh, being good stewards, stewards, you know, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai ambassadors. And we want to be found blameless. We want the Lord to show the utmost mercy, you know. Ain't none of us too tough, you know, to, uh, you know, none of us is that tough. You know, let ISUPK be that tough, you know, because they're going to be proven wrong that they that soft. Really, the real tough guys are really the real soft guys, you know, when they boast themselves to be uh, tough like that. But anyway, let's read the scripture, Revelations 3 and 15. I know thou works and thou are neither cold nor hot. I would thou wit cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will splew thee out of my mouth. Yeah, the Lord the Lord will splew thee out of his mouth because the Lord is not looking for a man to play the middle. Okay? As the scriptures say, he say what? Let your yea be yea, your nay be nay. Alright? Um, there was a saying from this, you know, that wicked dude, uh, Kevin Gates, you know, it came to my mind. He uh he said something that was true. Which he said, uh, he said, um, you know, if you can't be used, then you're useless. And that's so true. Especially us dealing in this truth. If the Lord can't use you, then you're useless. And what are we used to do? What are we, what are we being used to do? Is to teach the Lord's word. Okay? The Most High programmed his elect to have a certain fear. So that that fear that's inside these men, you know, it, it draws out their belief and remembrance of things they once knew so that they could be what educated elder apostle gabar always goes into that to, from time to time about the word educate means the word educate means to actually means to draw out so what is inside of these men is being drawn out and is drawn out with the fear okay the fear it means you know within the respect the reverence the praises the honoring okay of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that draws out what? Belief. You know? Uh, damn. Yes. Uh, excuse me. I'm losing my train of thought. But um, if you can't be used, then you're useless. You know, when you look at the parable 
and what Yahweh Shai said about uh, the, the men going out to the work. He said they will receive a penny. That penny represents salvation. So we're all working toward a penny, which is to, to receive the salvation. You know, um, there is no in between. You know, you either in the truth or you're not. You know, you can't have one foot in the world, one foot in the truth. All right, because now here it is. You know, your eye is not single. You know, you got to keep up the Joneses, so to say, with the things of the world. You know, and then here it is. You want to play. You want to keep up the Joneses in the, in the thing of the Lord. But it don't work that way. All right. Now, don't get it twisted. You know, we do have responsibility. Brothers got to work. Brothers have businesses and things like that. Of course, that's for our livelihood to further us more in the truth, to sustain us. All right. So the most High gives brothers those blessings to have that type of occupation to uh, sustain you, to better yourself in the truth. But now if you're doing things that pertains to the flesh, which are carnal things, things that really doesn't matter. All right. And even at this very moment, you know, the Lord is done cha changing the seasons and, and, and prophecies are popping like popcorn. All right. We're seeing the prophecies unfold. We're seeing the mark of the beast. We're seeing a new system being implemented. We see that we're in a new world order. OK, we see that World War, uh, World War Three is going to pop off. You can clearly see all these things. This is the end. Your focus should be more driven than it ever was, you know, and that's just I just wanted to make that point. I didn't want to uh, make this too long. So it says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So eventually the Lord is going to get rid of men who, you know, is not putting their hand to the plow. OK, because why? They look back. So that means they're not fit for the kingdom. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shemir Avishai, by Shemir Kakodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.